everybody, I'm Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist, and this is What's That, especially for Adobe Captivate beginners. Today we're going to be talking all about using Adobe Captivate and using Microsoft PowerPoint together. We'll be bringing Microsoft PowerPoint slides into Adobe Captivate, and then we'll be bringing Adobe Captivate simulations inside that Adobe Captivate project. That's exactly right. We're going to put Captivate projects inside of Captivate projects, and we're going to use PowerPoint all at the same time. It's going to be totally awesome. How do we begin? Well, it's really very simple. We just click on the welcome screen to import and start from Microsoft PowerPoint. We'll start a brand new project, okay? We'll start that new project. We could also go to the file menu and do the same thing. File, new project, project from Microsoft PowerPoint. A dialog window opens up and then we select our PowerPoint slide and open away it goes. It'll bring open the PowerPoint. We'll have a chance to bring in all the slides that we want to. We can choose, pick and choose any of those slides that we want to or don't want to. We can decide whether we want to have it embedded or linked. Linked means that it, the original PowerPoint file will be accessible externally in such a way that if you make changes to the external file, the actual Captivate authoring environment will make it clear to you that those changes have been made. It'll give you a little red light so that you'll know that you need to make an update. You can also change the scale and size as you can see there. You can change whether you want to use a mouse click or whether you want to advance slides automatically. Of course in PowerPoint the norm is just to use the mouse click. So we're going to go ahead just like that from there. I'm going to say okay and bring in our PowerPoint and thus create our original piece. Now you can see here I've got my PowerPoint in Let's take a look at this second slide. What if I wanted to make some changes to that second slide? Maybe I want to take example and embed it and make those two words lowercase. No problem. I just right click on the thumbnail and then I choose edit with PowerPoint. I'm going to edit this slide. I could edit the whole presentation if I wanted to. I just want to edit that one slide, that second slide. See how that pops up nice and slick like that? And it has the same interface as you have in PowerPoint. So you can use all the same tools that you have in PowerPoint, except it has this cool Captivate save bar. We're going to see how that works here in just a second. Click on it just like you would in PowerPoint and then say lowercase example, lowercase embedded, all the same tools from PowerPoint, no problem, lickety split, and then you just click save, and automatically it goes right back. Okay, so now you've made your modifications, and you can see they carried right across into Captivate. No need to fuss, no need to switch things around. You did it perfectly, right? Okay, one of the things people tell me all the time, they say, hey, we like to have a PowerPoint slide, and then we like to bring in a Captivate simulation, put it on top of the PowerPoint slide, or have some kind of interactivity from Captivate on top of the PowerPoint. No problem. Easy peasy. Look at this. All you have to do, go up here to Insert, and then choose Animation. Captivate projects, once they've been outported as SWIFTs, as Flash SWF files, are all animations, right? They're inter interactive animations. I'm going to bring in this one. Now this one is a typical kind of application training. It's a demo file application training. You can see here it's a little bigger than it should be for the slide. No problem. I just hold down the shift key to do a proportional scale and then I move that on over into the exact position that I want it to be. See that little green dot there? That green dot tells me that this file is in sync with its source file, okay? You're going to see those all over in the new Captivate because they tell you whether or not the source file has been changed and with one click you're able to update those source files. So you can see here that I very quickly, simply and easily brought in my animation. Let's see what it looks like. I'm just going to go up here to preview and then preview from this slide. We'll take a look at it and up pops our look, our preview and we Picture can this. there. You're a high profile I'm going to skip that so we don't have to listen to the voice, but notice the audio came in, the slide came in with the animation, here's the PowerPoint slide in the background, and this is fully interactive. I can go in You've here seen and how to use the content aware the filter on the last I can go back and forth to the You've menu. Seen how to use the content I can web. pop forward into the next section. I can even go through and get the feedback. So I know that, for example, in this particular training demo, I'm supposed to click select. I click select. I get the feedback for positive behavior, right? I click all, get more feedback. Um, I know that the next step is to go edit and then free transform. Let's just for fun, let's say pay special is what I choose. Oh, no, select free transform. You see that I get the hinting, I get the negative feedback, the positive feedback, everything functions just like it would uh, otherwise. So very quickly and easily, I'm able to create that piece, embed it inside, use the PowerPoint, and use Captivate inside of Captivate. That's all for today. 
Look forward to seeing you next time.